finals for the Mandela Trophy. They were contested between favourites Pakistan. They won five of their six qualifying matches. The only blip they had was when they were heavily beaten. That was at uh, Wanderers in Johannesburg by South Africa. And the home nation, South Africa. Now they got there with great difficulty because having won their first three qualifying games in a row, they then ran up against Pakistan at their brilliant best. Down they went. That was no surprise, but what was a surprise was when suddenly Sri Lanka got the better of them. Now that threw the whole tournament wide open and it all ended in a thrilling climax in the qualifying stages with a winner-take-all match in Port Elizabeth between South Africa and Sri Lanka. South Africa won the toss and in the end they won the game, but uh, had they lost the toss, you feel they must have lost the game because rain interrupted and spoiled it. Nevertheless, South Africa got there. So, the first of these two finals taking place at lovely Newlands Salim Malik, he won an important toss in the first leg at Newlands, but surprisingly fielded first, thus playing to South Africa's strengths. Their batsmen don't chase well, and their bowling and Tigerish fielding skills enable them to defend even a moderate-looking total. Even so, Pakistan should still have won that first leg after the home side slumped from 193 for four to 215 all out. Three runouts in 11 balls and three wickets for Wacky Yunus in five balls produced a total loss of six wickets for 22 runs in 30 deliveries. When Amir Sahail topped several dazzling previous innings in the tournament with a blitz of nine fours in his first 23 balls, most of them off Stephen Jack, who went for 29 in his first two overs, Pakistan was sprinting to victory. The 50 came up in eight overs. Sahail's sixth 50 in eight innings in the tournament came out of 65 in only 41 balls. And at 101 for two in the 22nd over, South Africa were nearly through the ropes. Until Malik was brilliantly thrown out by Kirsten to bring the closest yet decision made by a third umpire. More than most sides, the Pakistan fingers are often dangerously close to the self-destruct button. And this time they excelled themselves. Sahail and Latif ran themselves out to, of all people, Jonty Rhodes. And with Ijaz and Bazid Ali slogging their wickets away needlessly, there was no way back from 133 for 7 in the 34th over. And so to the second leg, where uh, Salim Malik, having been made to pay heavily for what looked to everybody to be an error in judgment after winning the toss and putting South Africa in, that was played at the Wanderers. Yet again, Salim Malik won the toss. And even more surprisingly this time, bearing in mind the fact that rain was about, and therefore that uh, is heavily weighted against the side batting second, he did it again. He took a vote among his players. It seemingly was 8-3 in favour of batting. He took no notice. He won the toss. Much to Hansi Cronje's surprise and pleasure, South Africa were put into bat. Let's see what happened. Mike Rindle was promoted to open the innings, and he and Kirsten established a new South African first wicket record stand of 190 in 38 overs. The two left-handers attacked with 17 boundaries between them and Wazim Akram and Waka Yunis, two of the world's best, were punished for combined figures of 19 overs, one maiden, two for 104. Rindle's maiden 100, 105 off 139 balls and Kirsten's 87 from 111 balls enabled Cronier's runner ball 37 to nail down a big score of 266 for five. Gettable? Well, yes, until de Villiers and Donald, back in international cricket for the first time in five months, sent Pakistan crashing to 42 for six in 12 overs, and the game was won and lost. De Villiers got Sahail, possibly an unlucky LBW decision, as he might have hit it. Ijaz and Sanwa also went to de Villiers, that little spell of three wickets in 11 balls, and Donald whipped out Malik, Inzamam and Latif in 12. Richardson, he took five catches. Rhodes got another run out, Akram and the humiliation was complete. The Nelson Mandela Trophy, named after the state president who watched part of the game, that went to Cronier to complete a great six weeks for South Africa's new captain. He led his side to a 2-1 series win against New Zealand from 1-0 down, the first such comeback in the 20th century and the third in test history. And he followed that with this emphatic 2-0 defeat of the World Cup holders. Highlights of the 12 round robin games in which South Africa, Pakistan, New Zealand and Sri Lanka played each other twice, included 432 runs from 530 balls. That was by man of the series, Amir Sahail. And there were hundreds from Dave Callahan and also Arjuna Ranatunga, Adam Perore, Ijaz Ahmed, Ken Rutherford and Callahan's unbeaten 169 against New Zealand. That was at Centurion Park 
That was the fifth highest ever one-day international score and the second highest in a 50-overs game. Bowling highlights were fewer, with Wacker Yunus the star turn for his 21 wickets in eight games, including a magnificent clean bowl hat-trick against New Zealand in East London. It might only have been a tail-end trio, but each time the ball moved considerably at top pace and the three deliveries would have beaten most top batsmen. So, a successful tournament, with South Africa proving again that resilience and strength of character can beat brilliant but often erratic cricket.